This is part 7 of a 9 part video series showing how to rebuild a Toyota solid front axle. It can apply to 1979 through 1985 Toyota pickups and 1984 and 85 Toyota 4Runners. Additionally, these instructions could also loosely apply to many Toyota Land Cruisers. In today's presentation, we will be showing how to rebuild the locking hub assembly. The tools and supplies needed are an impact drill, standard screwdriver, a pick tool, small standard screwdriver, snap ring spreader pliers, and snap ring pliers. Additionally, you'll need brake parts cleaner, fast drying enamel paint, a quality wheel bearing grease, masking tape, cleaning cloths, and a vernier caliper. Although this is optional, we like to use the bead blast machine to clean up some of the parts. Place the locking hub assembly on a clean work surface. Remove the hub cover bolts using a 10 mm socket. Remove the hub cover and set it aside. Next, remove the inner hub snap ring. This is done by using snap ring spreader pliers. Once the snap ring is removed, remove the inner hub. Then the inner hub spacer. Now remove the hub ring snap ring using a small standard screwdriver. Next remove the hub ring and set the hub aside. The next step is to disassemble the hub cover assembly. Remove the clutch by compressing the spring and rotating it clockwise. Once the clutch has been removed, remove the compression spring. Unless damage is noted, there's no need of disassembling the clutch any further. Now disassemble the hub cover. Using a small standard screwdriver, remove the snap ring. Remove the locking hub dial. Be careful not to lose the detent ball. Using a pick, remove the detent ball. Remove the detent ball spring. Take special care not to lose these two small parts. Next, remove the control handle seal. And that concludes our disassembly. After the locking hub has been disassembled, clean and inspect all the parts. Begin by wiping as much dirt and grease as possible with a cloth. Then further clean the parts using brake cleaner and drying them with a cloth or compressed air. Using the bead blast machine, blast away any remaining paint, road grime, or oxidation from the locking hub dial and the hub cover. Do not bead blast any other parts. Be sure to clean all of the glass beads from these parts after bead blasting. Mask off the area of the hub cover that is not to be painted. Do the same thing to the locking hub dial. Apply several coats of a fast drying enamel paint to the hub dial. Do the same thing to the hub cover. Once the paint is dried, remove the masking tape from both parts. Before reassembly, carefully inspect all the parts for damage and excessive wear. Be sure to check the clearance between the inner hub and the hub ring. This is done by measuring the outside diameter of the inner hub 
and the inside diameter of the hub ring and subtracting the two measurements. The first measurement was 1.652 inches and the second measurement was 1.651 inches. The difference between these two numbers is 0.001 inches. There should be no more than 0.012 inches difference between these two measurements. If there is, then these two parts will need to be replaced. Now that all the parts are clean and inspected, we're ready for reassembly. Apply a good quality wheel bearing grease to both sides of the spacer. Position the spacer between the inner hub and the hub ring. Using snap ring spreader pliers, install the snap ring. Apply a liberal amount of bearing grease to the entire inner hub assembly. Install the inner hub assembly in the hub body. Then install the snap ring. Wipe off any excess grease and turn the hub over. Install the hub dial seal. Install the detent spring. Apply a small amount of grease to the detent hole. Also apply some grease to the outer part of the hub dial and the hub dial seal. Now install the detent ball. Install the hub dial in the hub cover, making sure the detent ball aligns with this notch. Make sure the dial works freely and snaps into place at both the free and lock position. Now install the hub dial snap ring using the snap ring pliers. Work the dial back and forth to make sure that it still works freely. Place the compression spring on the Paul clutch assembly. Place the hub cover gasket on the hub cover, making sure that it aligns with the bolt holes and the notches. Install the Paul and clutch assembly on the locking dial. This is done by aligning the tabs on the Paul with the grooves on the locking dial and turning the Paul counterclockwise. This places the pawl and clutch in the free position ready for installation into the hub body. With the hub dial still in the free position, dry fit the hub cover assembly in the hub body in a trial and error approach until the hub cover assembly fits in the body easily and the bolt holes are aligned properly. Now that you know the positioning of the hub cover, remove the cover, taking special note of the hub cover positioning so that it can be reinstalled in exactly the same place. Now lubricate all the internal parts. Place the pawl in the locked position. Lubricate the internal and external splines of the clutch. Also lubricate the pawl and the hub dial grooves. Next, apply lubricant to the inside of the hub body. Wipe off any excess grease from the gasket surfaces. Reposition the pawl in the free position and install the hub cover back in the hub body in the same position it was in earlier. Install the six hub cover screws. Then snug the screws in a progressively tighter crisscross pattern using a 10 millimeter socket. Then torque the screws to 8 foot-pounds. Be sure not to over torque these screws, they are easily stripped. Finally, check the hub locking assembly for proper operation. Work the dial from lock to free. It should snap into place in both positions. With the dial in the free position, check to see that the inner hub moves freely. Then, with the dial in the lock position, check to see that the inner hub does not move freely. We remind you that all the parts necessary to rebuild this hub assembly can be purchased through our website at www.lowrangeoffroad.com or by calling 
805-6644. 